Hello and welcome. I hope that you are having a fantastic day. We're going to talk about Bitcoin news today. And in the news is a Yale study. Every portfolio should include 6% Bitcoin at least. Now, what does that really mean, every portfolio? Let's break it down and say it really simple. Every human being, according to this Yale study, should have something invested in Bitcoin, even if it's just a little bit of money. Now, I don't know how much you personally have uh, set aside for savings slash investing, but according to this study, you might want to consider, if, if you think this study is valid from Yale, you may want to consider whatever that dollar amount you have in sales to put at least 6% into Bitcoin. So let's get into it. In today's video, we're going to cover three different articles, three different subjects, really. We're going to look at ICE, and this is the Intercontinental Exchange, not the government entity ICE. The Intercontinental Exchange owns the New York Stock Exchange, and they own the Bitcoin or cryptocurrency exchange called BACKT, B-A-K-K-T. So ICE spent nearly $300 million helping BACKT acquire loyalty firm Bridge2. This is a really big deal, and in this video, I'll show you exactly why. So watch to the very end. We're also going to look at how a Bitcoin whale addresses hit highest numbers uh, since August of 2019. And we're going to look at the Yale study I mentioned at the very beginning that every portfolio should include at least 6% Bitcoin at least. This will be wrapping up the video when we get to this article. So should I buy Bitcoin now or should I wait? We're going to give you ideas to help you take profits and avoid losses. Can we get this video to 99 likes? Smash the like button. The Google algorithms and the YouTube algorithms absolutely love it. So I'm not a financial advisor and this is not financial advice. This is my opinion. How, whoops, that was a little early, but we're going to keep going. So right now, Bitcoin is hovering around $8,936. It's been sitting at this price range. In fact, yesterday it actually peaked up to $9,400 and then quickly dropped down to the $8,800 level and it's been kind of floating around $8,800 for the last 24 hours. And you can see that by its percentage increase because it's only gone up 0.69%. And as you can see, a lot of the rest of the cryptocurrency market is in green, but we do see quite a number of reds floating in and out on some of the different exchanges. So ICE, the Intercontinental Exchange, and this is the company that owns the New York Stock Exchange, spent nearly $300 million helping back to acquire loyalty firm Bridge2. So the Intercontinental Exchange, the parent company to back, spent close to $300 million helping the Bitcoin warehouse acquire loyalty rewards provider Bridge2 Solutions, says the CEO, Jeffrey Sprecher, on Thursday. Um, and so the revelation came during a discussion of the financial strength of ICE, the parent company of several major trading venues, including the New York Stock Exchange. Sprecher said during ICE's quarter one earnings call that the company had opportunistically repurchased shares spending $300 million at $92 per share during the quarter while maintaining the company's leveraged measured while maintaining the company's leverage measured as the ratio of debt to earnings before interest taxes depreciation and amortization we also spent nearly 300 million helping back to acquire bridge to solution sprecker said Yet our leverage was still at 2.3 times, which is a complete testament to the strength of the cash flows of this business. So why is that a big deal? Who gives a rip that ICE purchased Bridge2 Solutions? And what does that have to do with Bitcoin and cryptocurrency? Well, let's jump into it. Who is Bridge2? Let's take a look and see. So Bridge2 is a company 
that brings these four different things together. They bring banks, they bring commerce partners such as multi-chain retailers, wholesalers, travel and gift cards. They bring together merchandise, travel pay with points, tickets, events, cards, e-cards, cash statement credit, and they also bring together financial institutions, financial tech providers, etc. So I know it's still kind of confusing and doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but really, here's what ICE or I'm sorry, here's what Bridge 2 and they as they mentioned here in this little headline that they have floating above their webpage, they do rewards they do loyalty points. They deal with paying for things with points. In other words, if you have American Airline miles, you can go somewhere and buy stuff with your American Airline miles. They have an entire reward suite so that if you have other kinds of rewards or even loyalty plan points, you can use those points and rewards from all kinds of different systems and you can buy stuff with those points. So let's take a look at how Bact is going to use all of this. This is Bact's new app. It's not launched yet. It's going to be launched. They've, they've announced that their plan is to launch it sometime this summer. Now, I say that carefully just simply because companies always say, oh, yeah, we're going to have our new software out on such and such a date. And oftentimes that date gets pushed farther and farther into the future. But this is an early release or early information about Back's new software app for both iPhone and Android. And you can see here that they give you a total dollar value of this portfolio. And then they show you how much of the portfolio was from in-game in rewards or points. How much of the portfolio is from rewards. How much of the portfolio is from cash and how much of the portfolio is from crypto. And so what they're doing is building an app where you could go to Starbucks or you could go to Home Depot or you could go to your grocery store and you could buy things actually using your Bitcoin. You could buy things using your airline miles. You could buy things using some sort of reward points. You could buy things using in-game points of some sort. Um, as well as using cash and USD. And so um, it's quite interesting what this, what this is going to be all about. So it includes loyalty redemption. It includes crypto trading. It includes cash payments and so on. So if you're interested in this, I am going to include a link so that you can come to this website and read all this information in detail to learn more about it. In fact, one of the things that I always do in the YouTube comments, you have to go to the YouTube video itself. So if you're watching this on another platform such as uh, Twitter or Reddit or somewhere else, you'll want to click on the video and go in the lower corner so that you can click the button to actually go to the video on YouTube. And once you're at YouTube, you can go to the descriptions to find the links to this article as well as all the other articles that I share. In fact, that's a, that's a standard practice that I do with our videos is when I do a video, I leave the links to the articles I share with you so that you can always do more research on your own. Bitcoin whale addresses hit highest numbers since August of 2019. So... One of the things that I like to do is whale watch when it comes to Bitcoin and other uh, cryptocurrency assets. And the reason why I like to whale watch is because whales have spent, well, in this particular article, we're going to talk about people who have invested in 10,000 Bitcoins or more. Well, let's break that down. That means that you have $88 million or more in Bitcoin. Now, I don't know about you, but if I had $88 million and I was going to spend it on Bitcoin, I would do a little bit of research. In fact, I might even pay or hire people to do research for me just to help me make a good investment, help me make sure that my investment is secure, and help me make sure that I don't make any mistakes and don't expose myself to the ability of somebody to steal my $88 million. And so when somebody 
invests $88 million into Bitcoin, there was a lot of thought, planning, and, and so on that went into that transfer long before it ever happened. And so when they make a, when whales make moves like that, and, and this is just my opinion, this is not financial advice. In fact, actually, okay, I did do the disclaimer. I think I'm not a financial advisor and this is not financial advice. This is my opinion. And I would highly recommend before you invest in cryptocurrency, at least read this disclaimer and be aware of what you're getting into before you actually make the investment. Where was I? We're over here. So anyway, here's the bottom line. Whales have made done a lot of prep work before they ever make a move. And that prep work tells you their confidence in what they're doing. Um, plus, they've spent more money than you and I have spent on trying to make sure that they're making a good decision and that their actions pay off. And so when I see a whale taking action, I know that there was a whole lot of work that happened long before they ever took that action. So the seven day moving average of the number of addresses holding 10,000 Bitcoins or more, and that's $88 million of Bitcoin or more, has hit 111 on Wednesday, the highest level since August of 2019, according to blockchain intelligence firm Glassnode. That number has risen by more than 11% since early March. So you can see this is a chart of the number of addresses that have 10,000 Bitcoin, $88 million or more of Bitcoin, because some of them actually hold hundreds of millions and even billions of dollars in Bitcoin. So increased interest from long-term holders and large investors could be associated with the bullish narrative surrounding the macro factors and upcoming reward halvening. Some of these addresses may belong to high net worth individuals or groups who are diversifying into Bitcoin amid the ongoing coronavirus pandemic and ahead of the mining reward halving due in the next two weeks, said Wayne Chen, CEO of Interplace Technologies, founder of Coin Curve, a cryptocurrency purchasing and spending platform. All right, so let's do a little bit more whale watching, but this time the whales are giving information and a slash advice to you and I, more the regular or common person. This is coming from Yale University, and they this study says every portfolio, in other words, every human being should include 6% Bitcoin at least. A new research paper published by an economic professor at Yale University recommends a portfolio with at least 6% in Bitcoin. According to Professor Ala, I, I don't know how to pronounce his name, so forgive me, uh, Bitcoin should be an imperative part of your portfolio regardless of whether you're enthusiastic about the cryptocurrency or not. For an optimal construction of one's portfolio, the economist holds that Bitcoin should account for at least 6% of it. Those who are less enthusiastic about the world's most popular cryptocurrency should hold 4% of it. Um, and then this was a quote from somebody else. Institutional investors are recognizing this new asset as valued investment opportunity. This will encourage individual investors. It will also encourage consumers and small shops to start trading in cryptocurrency. Now, if you saw that backed app, small shops don't need to start trading in cryptocurrency. People will be able to use the backed app in order to trade in cryptocurrency. So we'll be getting more information about that app and how you'll actually be able to trade at a retail store and small shops using the app. Um, but that's, that's information that's coming. They may issue uh, some sort of debit card or we'll find out more as, that get, that, as the app gets released. Now, the study titled Risks and Returns of Cryptocurrencies also outlines a very positive feature of cryptocurrencies when compared to traditional stocks and bonds. Using the Sharpe's ratio demonstrated that the digital currencies show higher potential for return despite their increased volatility. It's noteworthy, however, that the professor only examined the following cryptos, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Ripple for the purpose of his study. 
The observation of Tavinsky and his colleague fall in direct con contradiction with another noted economist, Nobel Prize winner, Robert Schiller, who said early in May that Bitcoin is a failed experiment and another example of faddish human behavior. So obviously I wouldn't be doing this YouTube channel if I agreed with that person's sentiment, but that's his right to have his own opinion. All right, and then the last thing I wanted to share with you is Yale Endowment Banks on Crypto. So not only was this particular professor uh, advocating cryptocurrency, but the Ivy League Endowment Fund has also invested in cryptocurrency. Um, and they basically say oh, Yale cur currently has the second largest endowment for colleges and universities worldwide behind only Harvard. Yale's endowment currently sat slightly north of $27.2 billion dollars at the end of 2017, which worked out to a value of uh, $2,191,268 per student at Yale. Harvard's endowment is significantly larger, sitting at approximately $36 billion at the end of 2017. And so the point here is not only is Yale, uh, not only is this specific investor, uh, uh, I'm sorry, this specific professor at Yale recommending cryptocurrency, but the Yale Endowment Fund, which is a $27 billion fund, is investing not only in cryptocurrency, and they have created a hedge fund for cryptocurrency, and they actually own actual crypto. And so Yale is, has, has gone into the deep end when it comes to Bitcoin and cryptocurrency in general. And so when they make this recommendation that every portfolio should include cryptocurrency, they've already taken action on that. And remember what we were saying about looking for what kinds of actions the whales are taking? You have to believe that when Yale is making an investment of something, that they've spent at least a little bit of time studying it before they take part of that $27 billion endowment fund and invest it into any particular assets. And Yale has some pretty smart people in order to make those investments. So that's what I have for you in the news today. How can I be of service to you? Do you have any questions, thoughts? Do you disagree with anything that I said? I'd love to hear your polite disagreements in the comments below. In the meantime, like, subscribe, and hodl. And I hope that you have a fantastic day.